Ho Hoovians, Harry here, and with the first Hooniverse spin-off, The War Between the Land and the Sea, now in production, I thought now would be a good time to continue my Sea Devil rewatch series. Continuing on with the second Sea Devil story, Warriors of the Deep. Sorry I haven't been uploading recently, but I have just been busy, but now I'm getting back into the swings of it, um, reviewing Warriors of the Deep for this video. But before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe, also leave a like and comment down below, and let's get in to the video. So, Warriors of the Deep is a fifth Doctor story set in a, in a sea base where Silurians and Sea Devils actually break in, and this is as much a Sea Dev- and this is actually as much a Silurian story as it is a Sea Devil story because the Silurians actually set the events of this episode into motion. So the Fifth Doctor, Tegan and Turlo arrive on this um, kind of sea base and at first they try to stay out of the way of the sea base because they didn't intentionally land there. However, the Silurians and Sea Devils have different um, thoughts about the Doctor staying out of the events of this story because the Silurians actually set the events of this story into motion by trying to help their Sea Devil brothers by awakening them from their hibernation, setting them into fight against the humans as these Silurians do not want peace, they want war. So, with the Silurians and the Sea Devils starting a war against this sea base, the Doctor quickly gets involved with everything going haywire and they are eventually found and they are brought to help in this war between these unknown threats at the moment, which is revealed to be the Sea Devils and the Silurians. And actually, we are getting a, a Silurian, at least one, in the Christmas special this year, The um, Joy to the World. So maybe this will factor into the spin-off between the war between the land and the sea. Maybe we'll see the Sea Devils and Silurians working together, or, or maybe we will see a freeway war between the Silurians, the Sea Devils, and UNIT in the spin-off of The War Between the Land and the Sea. However, in this episode, it's not just shown that Silurians and Sea Devils have a bond, because episode two ends with the cliffhanger of the Merka breaking into the sea base, with guns not affecting it, and the Doctor stating that it is a massive threat. And the Merka is the, like this big sea leviathan creature, and yeah, it looks a bit dated by nowadays, but so I would love to see the Merka being brought into, like, um well, brought up to date in New Who, in Modern Who, because I think a big sea leviathan creature could be great, and it would show that maybe Unit, and if the Silurians are fighting it, that they are out of their, that Unit are out of their depth, and they might need help from Silurians to break through the Merka to defeat the Sea Devils. So I think that would be great, because it is presented as a massive threat in, well, Warriors of the Deep. However, unfortunately, it's defeated 12 minutes later in the next episode, which is really unfortunate because it is stated to be a massive threat, and it's a letdown to see it defeated so easily. And also, another thing that's a letdown that I thought would be really great is revealed in the background of episode 2 and 3, and also kind of one as well, but we don't know until episode two, that there are two enemy agents aboard the sea base um, pretending to work at, on it, but are actually working to destroy the sea base. And they have this um, plot where there is a guy that can psychically link to missiles to fire them, and he's the only person that can fire them. However, he's under stress, and these two enemy agents kind of program him once he gets, like, almost knocked out after um, not firing some missiles because under the guise of protecting him, they actually make him become evil and become an enemy agent and destroy some of the sea base so it doesn't get traced back to them, but they're making him destroy it to work into their goal as enemy agents. 
So, with both the uh, Sea Devils and Silurians working to destroy the sea base and these two enemy agents, I thought like, like these two plot lines would connect together and that they would both work with each other to destroy the sea base. However, both enemy agents are killed as soon as they encounter the Sea Devils. And it's just like, they, they're... They are working to the same cause, to destroy the sea base, destroy all the humans in it. But they are killed as soon as they come into contact with the sea devils. And it would just work so well, because their goals align. And I know this is a nitpick, but why do the Silurians and sea devils kill everyone on the sea base that they come into contact with, but the important characters, like the Doctor, Tegan, Turlow, Bulick, Preston and uh, the captain they just they just capture them they don't know they don't kill them they capture them but as soon as they come into contact with not important characters they kill them why because they don't even capture them to use them in some way yeah the doctor they kind of do use but they had no reason to hold Tegan, Turlow, Bulick and Preston hostage they they, they just they should just kill them and they don't. They are such a powerful threat, killing every character without hesitation, with them not being able to stand up in any way, shape and form. But when it comes to the important characters, they capture them and then they somehow escape and it leaves them open to attack, which is just so stupid. And it is stupid capturing them because in the final episode, with them having captured the Fifth Doctor, Tegan, Turlo, Bulick and Preston, they manage to escape and that is when they discover the Sea Devil's weakness. Heterochromic gas, as it is deadly to all reptilian life, which is where Silurians and Sea Devils evolve from. Hopefully we get a little bit more history and backstory in, in the war between the land and the sea to their origins, because I would love that, where they evolve from uh, reptilian life and how humans took over the world when they went into hibernation. I think that would be cool. But just in this episode, they have a weakness to heterochromic gas. So the doctors and his friends find this because a Silurian accidentally shoots a gas tank that has that in it and it kills it. Yeah, really stupid. One capturing them for them to escape and two shooting the gas in a room which is deadly to you, but hey, I'm not the one writing it. And while this is happening, the Silurians and some of the Sea Devils prepare to fire missiles to, in the hope to wipe out all humans that they come into contact with. And this is a lot different than the Sea Devils from the previous Sea Devil story, the Sea Devils, because they were open to peace with humanity until the humans attacked the base that they were in. And while they were, yeah, very cunning and wise and they worked to destroy the humans after that, they still wanted peace in the first place or they were open to peace. Whereas these Silurians and Sea Devils are not open to peace in any way. However, I think it's more the Silurians deal and the Sea Devils are just beholden to that because they helped them out of their hibernation. So in this story, the Sea Devils seem more like heavies like the Silurians Warriors, maybe that's where the episode gets its name from, Warriors of the Deep, rather than their own actual, like, colony and their own actual threat. They just seem like heavies for the Silurians, which is a real shame. And it's a real shame because this is the only time I think that we see si Sea Devils and Silurians working together, so it will make much better sense for it to be a partnership. However, the Sea Devils just stand around seeming to wait for the Silurians' instructions, with them being sent in first, well, after the Merka, but the Sea Devils are the ones calling, sorry, the Silurians are the ones calling the shots. And it makes them open to attack easily, because the Doctor manages to flood the bridge, which is where the Silurians and Sea Devils have um, taken up command with Captain Commander Rorschach, um, them, like, him under their orders, otherwise they'll kill him. But the Doctor manages to flood the bridge with heterochromic gas, weakening the Silurians and the Sea Devils. And with the Sea Devils just standing around waiting for instructions from the Silurians, and them, like, just 
with their focus on the missiles and Commander Vorshak, they are open to attack very easily. So, the Doctor floods the bridge with the heterochromic gas, but he instructs Turlo and Tegan to give the Silurians oxygen so that they won't die while the heterochromic gas is being flooded in. So, Tegan and Turlo would do this. However, it is revealed by Commander Vorshak that the Sea Devils have already set the missiles in to fire, as there is another ship well, submarine coming towards this sea base, so they will die if they don't stop the missiles. And the Doctor manages to stop the missiles from firing by tapping himself into his psychic, into the psychic link, and the Doctor obviously is really good at psychic links, we've seen that time and time again. So it shows that he is immensely more intelligent than everyone else, which really shows his authority, which I think is really good. However, the Silurians that they have helped with the oxygen one of the Silurians they have, like, revived with the oxygen, fires his gun, killing Commander Vorshak. And then, suddenly, all the Sea Devils and Silurians succumb to the heterochromic gas, killing them. And even the one that they help with oxygen, and even the ones that they try to help with the oxygen, doesn't help for some reason now. And Commander Vorshak basically dies for no reason, because they decided to help the Silurians. And what makes it weirder is the Fifth Doctor laments that there should have been another way after seeing all these humans and Silurians and Sea Devils dead. But Doctor, you tried to help the, C the Silurians and they literally killed someone because you tried to help them. There was no other way. You had to let them die because they would have killed you like, if you had tried to help them. It's literally shown in the episode that they help them with oxygen and then they kill a human. There was no other way. They had to die. I don't get why the Doctor thinks that there should have been another way. There wasn't. And it just leaves the episode on a weird, almost sour note. Because the, the Doctor has showed that he is immensely intelligent, um, like stopping the Merka, slowing that down the Sea Devils and Silurians, finding their weakness, um, and basically stopping the missiles with his psychic power when he's tapped into the psychic power. It's not just a weird thing he can somehow do that now is actually embedded into the story that the missiles work psychically. But then he laments that there should have been another way, when it is literally shown that when they try to help them, they just ended up killing humans. It's so dumb. But overall, I do like this episode. I do like the TARDIS team of the fifth Doctor, Tegan and Turlo. I think a younger Doctor works better with his companions, while also this Doctor does show his age, as well as his immense abilities and intelligence that he has learned throughout the hundred years that he has been alive. But unfortunately, as this is a Sea Devil story and it is um, on about, I am learning about this because of the upcoming spin-off about the Sea Devils, they seem to play second fiddle to the Silurians as the Silurians wake them up. The Silurians send them into the sea base first to take down the humans and the Sea, and the sea Devils just stand around whilst the, Silurians tell the, whilst the Silurians tell the humans what to do. So it is a bit bad that the Sea Devils just seem to be playing second fiddle. It seems like the Sea Devils almost regressed from this episode from where they were previously because they were so smart, cunning and manipulative they even managed to double cross the master. Whilst in this episode the Sea Devils just seem like the Silurians warriors which is a real letdown. So this episode unfortunately doesn't give us much about the Sea Devils because they just seem like backseat basically aliens compared to the Silurians, and I really hope that doesn't happen in the war between the land and the sea, because we are getting Silurians, and the last time they were together, the Silurians were definitely in control, as opposed to the Sea Devils. But that is just my thoughts. Um, let me know down in the comments below, have you seen this episode? What did you think of it? And do you think the relationship between the Silurians and the Sea Devils will be brought up in the war between the land and the sea. Are you excited for the first spin-off in the Hooniverse era coming in the upcoming years? 
and also if you like this video don't forget to leave a like, also subscribe and share it and I will see you in the next one.